the comma, the semicolon. Commas had a lot of uses for punctuation. They were peppered uh, through many of our sentence structures. The semicolon is a little bit stronger pause than a comma. Here are some uses for the semicolon. Our dog Buster chases his tail. Our cat Missy also chases Buster's tail. Subjects and verbs in these. Our dog Buster chases his tail. Well, it's the dog that chases. You might want to say Buster chases, but Buster is naming the dog. Buster is actually, in this case, an appositive. It is telling us who the dog is, the, just mentioning the dog's name. So in this case, we would put commas to enclose Buster. So the actual subject of this sentence is dog. Dog chases his tail. Our cat, Missy, again, we've got uh, a, an appositive because Missy is the name of the cat. So we will put commas here to enclose that appositive. Our cat <coughs> chases. So we have dog chases, cat chases. There's, there are two sets of subjects and verbs in this particular sentence. When that happens, we know that it's probably got uh, two clauses in there, so we'll need a joining word. But I don't see any joining word in that sentence. There's no and, there's no but, there's no yet, there's no fanboys in there. So that's where the semicolon comes in. The semicolon can also fit into the, the, the space between the two independent clauses of a compound structure. And it is like a fanboy word. So here we will put a semicolon. We, we need a semicolon here anyway, because the, there are a lot of commas in this sentence. We have the buster, and Missy are both enclosed with the commas without a coordinating conjunction, we will use the semicolon. When the semicolon is used, it's the only punctuation that you need between the clauses. We also have a, an apostrophe in this sentence telling us that the tail belongs to the dog buster. I haven't taken apostrophes yet. Those are coming. Let's do this, the second sentence. I understand your situation. Nevertheless, this is my final offer. All right, if we were to look for subjects and verbs in this sentence, I understand, subject, verb. I understand your situation. Nevertheless, this is, here's a, a state of being verb. So we have a verb here. All right, so we have our subjects and verbs in this sentence. I understand this is. All right, so we have two sets of subjects and verbs. We're looking for a connector. There is no fanboy in this one either, but we do have a semicolon that we can put between the clauses. Nevertheless, transitions us from the first clause to the second. So nevertheless needs to be offset with a comma. And we read our sentence, I understand your situation. Here's the pause. Nevertheless, that's a, a shorter pause. This is my final offer. And then we need an end punctuation. So commas get a shorter pause than the semicolon.